Awesome. <clears throat> I go by Dr. Alana also. Dr. Dr. Alana? Dr. Curry is retired. <laughs> oh. Be on an island somewhere. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I didn't know if she was going to be, if she was maybe posted up in San Francisco. Uh, Dr. Curry don't want no part of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. We're, uh, we're excited today because we're bringing, um, we're having a special um, uh command performance uh, type of um, a presentation this morning. Yesterday, uh, we were scheduled to have um, our last speaker, Dr. Alana, to come on. She's a, a trauma psychiatrist. So we were very excited um, that she was going to be joining us. And uh, then there was some initial, I, I knew something was up enough when she wasn't answering the phone. And then uh, her assistant said, uh, of course, that she had been trying to contact her. Um, bottom line is, um, her, uh, her son uh, had a, a medical situation. So that's why uh, she wasn't able to make it. But when I talked with her, I realized that to cap off this incredible, powerful month of paying tribute to women and to mothers, that we really needed that unique perspective that a board certified medical physician, a board certified psychiatrist could bring, especially in the avenue and the arena of, um, of trauma because childhood traumas, tra traumas at whatever stage of life we're in will cause us to pause. It will cause us to stop and to not be able to move forward. So we're just so excited and delighted that we're gonna be able to bring um, Dr. Alana on so she can just, just pour out uh, for, for a few moments information that could cause us to have a transformation. So we're excited that she was um, able to come back this morning. Tomorrow, we've got Dr. George so this whole, this whole, these last two, these, this last month and next month are going to be were epic and phenomenal. Um, I'd like for uh, for Reggie to just open us up in prayer, and then we're going to uh, listen to and uh, and take copious notes from Dr. Alana. Reggie, are you there? Yes, I am here. I'm un I'm unmuted now. Well, first of all, just want to say. Thank you, Lord, for this day, June the 1st, 2022. This day was not promised, but you made it possible. So we're going to just praise you, worship you, and magnify your holy name. Lord, we just give you all the praise and all the glory for it. Hallelujah. Thank you for this day. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Lord, we want to say thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you, Father for the word of God. Your word said it had never returned void, but it would accomplish that what it was sent out to do, Lord. And we thank you right now, Lord, that you're healing our land, Lord. We know, despite of what the circumstances has been these past few weeks, months, and all really, you can almost say the past two years, the Lord, you're sovereign. And Lord, we just thank you this morning, Lord. We know what the word of God says. That Father, just be mindful, be mindful of who you are. And first of all, it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all his righteousness will be added unto us, Lord. And we thank you right now, Father, for that, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to be obedient to your word. And Father, we thank you right now, Father, for this special, this special day, Lord. We thank you, Father, for allowing uh, Dr. Elena to be here with us this morning, Lord. We know that the enemy tried to distract her, but there's no weapon formed against her will prosper. And Lord, I just thank you right now, Father, she speaks this morning. Before she even comes up, just hide her behind the cross. Allow her to not speak of herself nor the flesh. But I thank you right now for blessing her. Father, not only blessing her, Lord, but I thank you right now for healing in her on her son behalf. Hallelujah. We thank you for that this morning, Lord. And if I just bless her, Lord, bless her business, Lord, bless her uh, profession, Lord, and thank you for her. And Lord, we just thank you right now for each and every man that's represented on the call. They're on this call for one purpose, and that's just to hear a word from you. And Lord, we thank you for pouring into us uh, this past month, Lord, for having the outstanding women that have poured into us. And Lord, I thank you. I know I'm better for it, Lord. And I thank you for them, Lord. Just pray them, pray for them, Lord, and just give them the strength and continue to allow them to carry on. Oh, thank you for that. And Lord, we just thank you right now that every need is met according to riches and glory in Christ Jesus. There's no lack. I thank you for being the supplier that you are. 
And not only, Father, thank you for being the provider, but Lord, thank you for complete healing in each and every man's body, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. We bind any attack that we know the enemy is trying to come against us. This Bible says there's no weapon formed against us will prosper. So we thank you for that. And Lord, we thank you right now for complete healing right now, Lord, over our own Dr. Kenneth Green. Lord, I, I thank you for this outstanding leader that's the founder of the National Men's Prayer Call, Lord. I just thank you for him as he gets stronger and stronger each and every day. Hallelujah. And thank you for First Lady Green that stands right in the gap with him. I thank you for them. And Lord, I just thank you right now, Lord, for blessing us all with our help, mate. Because the word of God says that a house cannot stand if it's divided and two cannot be together except they agree on the word. You're the word of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was God. So we thank you for that. And Lord, I just thank you right now for those that are in need of prayer. Lord, I just ask right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you right now for own brother Anthony Tolbert, for his daughter, his son-in-law, and his two grandchildren. Father, for the challenges that they're facing with this COVID. The devil, you are a lie. I bind it right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now that they're getting through this. And Lord, I just praise you. And I thank you as I'm speaking right now. Oh God, this virus has broken. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you right now for it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, I just thank you for that family. And Lord, I just give you all the praise and all the glory for blessing a friend of mine, uh, Miss Margaret Middleton. Uh, she was given a notice that uh, June the 3rd will be a last day of employment. But right now, Lord, we serve notice on Satan. This will not be the last day. Father, I thank you right now, a new beginning. <laughs> oh, God, some trust in horses and some trust in chariots. <laughs> oh, God, but for me in our house, we will serve the Lord. And I thank you for that. I just pray for her, Lord. Thank you for her blessing her. And Lord, I just thank you right now for our good friend, Miss Grace Edwards. Uh, thank you for allowing her to get stronger and stronger when she's facing this battle. But the victory is already won because <laughs> you said you're born on Calvary. And we thank you for her. And Lord, I ask you to lift up a good friend, also Palestine, as she's facing challenges in her in her body. <laughs> oh, God, no, the devil, you are a lie. And I thank you right now for healing over her. And Lord, we just give you all the praise and all the glory, Lord. Thank you, Father. Right now, as the school is wrapped up, Lord, I just pray for those children that's going to summer school, for those that are going to the workplace. I think that the angels are camped around about them, Lord. That's no weapon formed against them will prosper. But Lord, we thank you, Lord. And we just ask you to continue to lift up those families, Father, for the tragedy lost for their loved ones, Lord, as they bury them this week. Be with the family. Comfort him, Lord. Oh, God, I know something good is coming out of it, Lord. I, I don't get caught up in what I'm looking at because I know who you are. Ah. Oh, thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you all the praise for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, amen and amen again. You know, uh, we're so excited this morning because when I, when I was talking with Dr. Alana, it just dropped in my spirit that we needed to hear what she's going to share. So um, through whatever uh, aspects we can we can create and generate, we want this message to be able to get uh, into the into the ears, into the eyes and the hearts of men across the nation, really across the world. So from the beginning, when Dr. Emma spoke, uh, she just brought such broad insight and every speaker along the way has just added more and more so that now we have an incredible, incredible body of, uh, of information. You know, when we pray and ask God for something, uh, asking for a cake, we're surprised and even a little frustrated when we find flour, eggs, oil, and all those ingredients, but not a cake. And um, this whole month has been about those ingredients coming together to be able to create information for your transformation, information that you can use, that you can that you can build on, that you can uh, that you can look at from a different perspective of what a healthy relationship looks like. And a lot of times those relationships get stuck, get caught up in traumatic situations that will not will not allow them to be able to move forward. That's one of the reasons I was emphatic about making sure that we heard the voice of Dr. Alana. So without any further ado, I'm going to introduce and I'll present to you Dr. Alana, the trauma psychiatrist. Dr. Alana, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm here. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you so much for having me. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
And uh, again, my apologies uh, for missing yesterday. My son had uh, some challenges with asthma and you know, you know how life does. You, you can't, you, you don't know when it's gonna happen. You just have to respond. So um, I'm here. Now I am, I want to start by just thank you all for having, uh, having me here today. But more importantly, I want to say that I'm proud of you all that are here for doing this work and for being willing to pursue more information and being willing to challenge yourself to improve because it is, um, we, we live in a society that is, is not healthy. Let's, let's just start with when you are surrounded by unhealthiness, it's very difficult for you to be healthy in the first place. So when you're talking about healthy relationships and talking about from a trauma psychiatry perspective, um, I want to be clear that um, I look at things from the physical body and the psychological body. I really do try to um, get people to recognize uh, their own roles in how, uh, how their biology plays a role in their relationships. Now, one of the things that we are most challenged with in this society is that we have a tendency to think that mental health challenges are for them folks over there. You know, that those there, them over there are the ones who have the issues. And I have news for you. That is not how it works. It's always interesting to me when uh, we would do, when uh, I used to do couples therapy because I'm retired from uh, clinical care. But when I used to see couples and they come in and one goes, it's, it's her or it's him. And I'm like, okay, I know who to start with, okay? Because if you can't see your own role in the challenges that you and your partner are having, then you are essentially blind to reality. And that is actually a delusional condition. Delusion mean, meaning fixed false belief. We all operate in a fixed false belief that our version of reality and what our brain is telling us and how we perceive things is the truth. Well, that's not exactly how your brain works. So I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna give you a crash course on six important parts of your brain that you need to know in order to have healthier relationships because these six parts of your brain are predictably programmed by any psychological trauma that you have ever experienced. And I define psychological trauma not as some, you know, invisible high bar terrible thing that everybody can agree on being traumatic. I define psychological trauma as any experience that you've had that was so internally negative that it changed the way you feel about yourself, other people, and the rest of the world. That's a pretty broad definition, but that definition is broad because many things are traumatic, and in particular, dealing with uh, dealing with the challenges that our world currently presents us is traumatic. I can pick up my phone right now and go traumatize myself with some news or some footage of some things that have happened, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we need to understand this brain in order to understand how to have healthy relationships because your brain and your interpretation of your partner and anyone else is really driven by these six parts of your brain. So the first part of your brain that you need to know about is your amygdala. Your amygdala is your emotion generator. Now, most people have heard about the amygdala in the context of fight, flight, and freeze. And it does do that. And it's very good at doing that. And your amygdala is running in the background at all times. So you always have emotions and they don't come from your heart and they don't come from your gut. They come from your brain, okay? So your amygdala creates all of your emotions, whether it's fear, anger, uh, jealousy, embarrassment, shame, and joy, excitement, calm, <laughs> all of those, uh, uh, all of the good stuff also is generated by this amygdala. 
Now, the important thing that you need to understand is that your amygdala is not objective. Your amygdala does not base the internal response and the invisible urges and surges that it gives you on any objective reality. It bases it on what you believe and how you are interpreting the circumstances around you. And then it will create directly proportional emotions to what you think is happening. You're welcome. So I want you to understand that it's not your partner that's causing you to feel angry. It ain't your spouse who's making you mad. You made me do that. You made me say that. Mm, no, it's not how it works, okay? Your amygdala and your emotions are not generated by everybody else, but that's how, because of how we're designed, we are taught to look more at what's going on outside of us than to keep the awareness of what is going on inside of this animal, human, and spirit thing that we are driving. So your amygdala is super important because it creates a very large part of the sensations that you have in your body. The second brain system that you need to know about is your reticular activating system, your RAS. Your reticular activating system is your brain's filter and it filters information in the environment based on what your mind thinks it's important to pay attention to. You'll notice this phenomenon if you're ever decided that you were gonna get a particular car and all of a sudden you're driving around and that car seems like it's popping out all over the road and you like, yes, Lord, this, that's the sign. That, that, that is my truck, right? Mm, no, that's your reticular activating system that now has been programmed to alert to that thing and bring it more into your conscious awareness while it filters other things out. Well, the reason that you need to understand your reticular activating system is because it distorts information. It even distorts and filters the conversations that you and your partner are having. So when you speak, information has to get from your brain, out of your mouth, across space, and get into the other person's ears, and then they have to interpret what you said through their reticular activating system and their filter. This reticular activating system highlights parts of sentences. So this can be a reason why you, you might be talking to your partner and uh, you know she or he hears this, uh, th this part of what you said and they hone in on that. And you're like, wait a minute, is that what you heard? Because I said a whole lot of other stuff. That's because that reticular activating system is really powerful to shape the way that we interpret each other. So if you don't know that you have a reticular activating system, you may not realize that your mind pulls your attention towards negative things or traumatic things, especially if you've been hurt before, even especially in relationships, our brains can pull our attention and highlight things. So this is where, you know, if you've had a relationship where you've been cheated on before, that text message that comes in at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night is not just a text message, your reticular activating system's like, what's going on over there, right? So it's important to understand that our interpretation of each other is subjective and often needs correcting. The third brain system you need to know about is your somatosensory cortex. Your somatosensory cortex is the part of your brain that registers pain. It does not differentiate between physical pain, like somebody punching, slapping, and kicking you, or uh, psychological pain, like someone verbally punching, slapping, or kicking you, because we do that too. Uh, and so what I mean by it doesn't differentiate between it is that it generates the same internal response inside of your body. So I want to make it clear that whoever says sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt you, did not understand their own biology. Because words drive a great deal of the pain and the invisible injuries and wounds that we are experiencing in society. So just like somebody can say something that hurts you, you know, pinches you, pokes you, stabs you, you also say things and do things that pinch, poke, and hurt your spouse. So in a healthy relationship, we have to begin to acknowledge how our actions and our words actually cause real harm. It's not all in our head and it's not just our feelings getting hurt. It is 
real physical body sensations that we feel. Now we may be desensitized to that because we experience so much pain in our society, but the pain is still there and it happens. And if you pay attention to it, and if you honor when someone else is hurt, you will improve your relationships. The fourth brain system that you need to know about is your brain reward system. Your brain reward system is your addiction system. It's driven by the chemical dopamine, which is a very powerful pleasure chemical that is very short-lived. So our body is constantly looking to get more of its dopamine. Our brain reward system drives all of our addiction system. And so anything that you can think of that is pleasure inducing is addictive, okay? So let's just keep it, keep it real. Those butterflies in our stomach and those sensations that we get when we meet people and then they filter off or we develop tolerance and then that person doesn't give you those butterflies anymore. Or you have to work harder to get those butterflies. That's because human beings are uh, operating on dopamine. Every time you watch a commercial, and your mouth starts watering, and then you're driving into that restaurant. Uh, <laughs> that's your dopamine, and that's that brain reward system addiction gremlin uh, pulling on your behavior, pushing on your behavior. Humans are addicted to so many things, but when they're community and societal addictions, we don't like to admit that what they are. So I'm going to list some of the addictions that we have. We're addicted to salt. Uh, we're addicted to sugar. We're addicted to uh, greasy foods. Uh, they all those give us dopamine. We're addicted to each other. You're addicted to your partner when you're not around them or with them, and you, you may find yourself in withdrawal. Um, we're addicted to money, power, sex, orgasms, our phones. Uh, we're addicted to social media. We're addicted to television. We're addicted to uh, power. We're addicted to violence. We're addicted to a lot of things. So um, what is important to understand about the brain reward system is that it is always running. So it is not a matter of whether we have addictions or not. And I know people get triggered when I say that, but it's true. Um, doesn't matter if you think you have an addiction, you have them. The question becomes, what places are, you, are your addictions out of balance? What thing are you giving too much of your time and energy to? Because it may be work. It may be your salary and getting your money. It may be cars. It may be sports, sports fanatics. What is a fan? A fan is a person who gets a lot of dopamine from this thing that they love. So my point is, is being able to recognize your own body's uh, chemicals driving your behavior can improve your relationship because you can find more balance in how you choose to spend your time. The fifth brain system you need to know about is your mirror neurons. Your mirror neurons are part of your brain that help soak up information from the environment and help whoever, uh, you know, help a human being to understand the words, the phrases, the customs and the behaviors in their environment. They help us learn. And your mirror neurons start working from the moment you hit this earth, soaking up information from the environment around you. And our mirror neurons are programmed from the people who raise us and the people that we're around. So your guardians, your parents, your grandparents, your sisters, cousins, uncles, your role models, your teachers, your religious leaders, uh, your coaches, these are all people whose mannerisms, behaviors, ways of thinking, and use of language you absorb even without you being fully conscious of that. This is one of the, an example of how this can happen in your everyday life is if you ever hear uh, somebody singing a song, you may not even like that song, but then it's just stuck in your head. You're like, ah, why can't I get this out of my head? Or, you know, when I go to New Orleans to visit uh, where I went to college, I find myself with my Louisiana accent just coming back out just on accident because your brain is so much influenced by the things that you allow into your eyes and your ears. So this is also important to understand because you have to recognize 
that not only are you and your partner shaped by the environment that you grew up in, you may not recognize where you are playing out patterns of behavior that were programmed in your earlier years, even before or you even realize that you are learning from people and you're replaying those trauma cycles and those behaviors, your body has kicked in into its programming. So also recognizing when it comes to healthy relationships with your children, because you are one of the most powerful influencers of your children's behaviors. So if you yell and fuss and cuss, and then your kids go to school and they get in trouble for yelling, fussing and cussing, and then you come in and yell, fuss and cuss at them to stop yelling, fussing and cussing, then you are falling into the trap of children do what you do, not what you say. And it is important to understand your mirror neurons because we don't always see that they are mirroring our behavior because it's distorted. It's coming out of little people. They look different than us. It's out when, they, when you hear yourself, you be like, who, who are you talking to? But if you listen to yourself and listen to the environment that you put your kids in, you may find that your mirror neurons are programming them stronger than you thought. Last but not least, you really need to know about your biochemical matrix. Your biochemical matrix is a Dr. Alana term for all of these chemicals and hormones that our body makes that often releases into us that expand and extend the emotions that we feel. Examples of this are adrenaline, testosterone, uh, oxytocin, serotonin, uh, cortisol, which is a stress hormone. And you may have heard about several of these. And this is just a general term to get you thinking about how uh, your body can be affected by something weeks later, something that happened, you can still be feeling the effects weeks later, in part because of these chemical cascades that our body has. So this has uh, impact when people are like, man, I'm having insomnia, or I'm, you know, I'm, my brain is feeling fuzzy, and all this stress that we're having from COVID and all of these other traumatic experiences, uh, the, our cortisol levels are probably all pretty high right now because of the, the number of stressful events that we're dealing with. So it's important to recognize and have conscious awareness of how your biology shapes a great deal of your internal experience. I venture to, to say that your primitive biology that I, those six parts that I just mentioned shape about 90 something percent of your internal experience. Now, I've told you six primitive parts of your brain that are running your show right now. And you're like, wow, doc, where, where's the good news here? The good news is, is that you have one highest brain, one part of your brain that is the most evolved is your prefrontal cortex is right behind your forehead. You have two lobes sitting right there waiting to come to the rescue. But unfortunately, human beings only use on average about 10 to 15% of the capacity of our prefrontal cortex. So understand your whole brain is running all the time and there's more parts of your brain than what I'm talking about here. But those six parts of your brain are so loud and so much a part of your internal experience and your prefrontal cortex is quiet. It doesn't, it, 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 it's, it's that small internal voice. It's that, it's that wisest man. It's that deepest component of you that can find effective words, even when your emotions are, are roaring and you, you, you feel like you're getting ready to just snap on somebody or go off, or you're feeling that internal sensation of, of, of whatever your amygdala is creating. Your prefrontal cortex is there to be your CEO. It can think about not just your long-term plans, but your short-term plans and help prevent your primitive brain from taking you in a direction or in a situation that you don't wanna be in. So it's important for us to begin to activate this prefrontal cortex, this most evolved part of our brain with intention in order for us to be healthy. So I'm gonna give you a, uh, one, of my, one of the skills, my favorite skill that I give people is the love skill because it is how empathy can heal. And empathy, is an important concept. I don't have time to go super deep into it, but empathy is not just putting yourself in another person's shoes because you may take your, your size 11s and stick it 
in her eights and just go, oh, well, honey, your shoes are too small. You know, this is what you need to do. That's what most of us do. We give uh, we give from our own perspective, but when you're using empathy, you're taking the other person's experience. You're taking the other person's mind. You're putting on her ears and hearing yourself through her ears and allowing yourself to see yourself through her eyes and being able to process information through your partner's perspective. And that requires skill. It requires practice and it requires some help. So the love skill can help you remember how to engage your partner with empathy. The L is listen and look with suspended judgment. See, you didn't know until now that you had all this going on in your own brain. And you thought that you were getting the full perspective by watching this person's external shell. And nobody ever told you that just like no one can really know your full internal self and all of the hundreds of thousands of thoughts that run through your brain, you're not getting that when you're interacting with your partner either. So listening and looking with suspended judgment is you acknowledging that your version of reality is just one way of hearing things and that you can put yours to the side for a moment so that you can do the rest of these things. The O is observe the emotions inside of yourself and the other person. And when I say observe the emotions, I mean actually put a word on it. How am I feeling? I'm feeling uh, abandoned. I'm feeling embarrassed. I'm feeling jealous. I'm feeling ashamed. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling used. Put your words on those emotions because it's really important for us to develop our emotional vocabulary and in intellect to have healthy relationships. We've lived in a society that has told us men don't have feelings, women feel too much, you're not supposed to feel things. All that is hogwash because we are biologically unable to not feel things. Even if you don't feel things, that means you're numb or that may mean you're calm, but it does not mean that those emotions are not there because they are always in the background of your brain, okay? So learning to put awareness to your own emotional state and observe the emotions of the other person as well. They may be sitting there looking like this and you don't see anything from your perspective, but I guarantee you inside of them, <laughs> that animal is generating all kinds of stuff. So being aware and putting a label on those emotions. The V is validate the differing yet equal perspectives of all parties involved. Now, validation does not mean that you're in agreement. Validation is verbally expressing to the other person that you understand why they are thinking of it or experiencing it that way. That's not to say that you agree with it. It is simply, okay, I got enough information that I, I believe that I have a handle on where you're coming from and what your perspective is and verbally letting the other person know that. The E is express yourself skillfully, creator. Express yourself skillfully. And what I mean by that is that it's really important for us to get out of speaking from our addiction to being right. It's more important to be effective than being right. Because a lot of times we're treating our feelings as if they're fact something that makes me feel good, I'm going to say that's right. So instead of me assuming that my perspective is what is right, being able to express myself in a way that I effectively address what needs to be addressed at any given time, or sometimes not saying that thing that my biology or my knee-jerk primitive brain is giving me to say, um, that is when you begin to find you have control of yourself as a creator because that is what our identity is. When I say uh, express yourself skillfully, creator, it's a reminder that you create things inside of yourself and your partner every moment of every day. There is no such thing as doing nothing. Even when you sleep or sitting still, you know, people are like, oh, well, we got into it. Well, what'd you do? I didn't do nothing. Ah, impossible. <laughs> that is not how human beings work, okay? So being able to recognize yourself as 
part of any dynamic and that there is no such thing as it only being a one-way problem in any relationship. Putting your mind on yourself and focusing on you and focusing on your part in the situation is how you begin to heal your mental health and how you begin to create healthier relationships, not just with your, uh, with your partner, but in your family life, with your friends. Men have to build healthier friendships. And in doing that, it is really being able to engage in empathy and in love and develop yourselves uh, emotionally so that you can truly be the leaders uh, that God has designed you to be in your homes and in this world. So I'm going to stop there. I hope that you all uh, come learn more from me at the Trauma Cure. Um, that's my next three-day educational event that's happening June 22nd through 24th, and you can get tickets at thetraumacure.com. Uh, Dr. Mack, thank you so much for having me today, and I hope that uh, I've blessed you all with this information. Well, you have indeed. And I just want to, um, I, I was just in, impressed and, and, and compelled to make sure that we got this information out. Uh, a lot of it we know, but sometimes it's just the reiteration, rehearing uh, something that's gone forth that re, uh, reinvigorates and, and, uh, and it just gives us a, a full understanding of that information. Uh, you talked about the amygdala. You talked about all the different parts of the brain. And I was like, wow, no wonder I'm all over the place bouncing. But when you talked about the prefrontal, prefrontal cortex and that that's a, that we can intentionally and willfully um, start, begin to reprogram it so that it will take and help us to control the other six aspects of our being. That's powerful. So that in order for us to be able to grow and to become all that God has designed for us to be, it means that we need to be focused on all of those areas. Let the brain, understand the brain. But when we put all of this information together, what we started um, with Dr. Emma, and uh, we, we just went all the way through this whole uh, chain and came down to this point here, it's because men, we want you to get stronger. We want you to grow. We want you to begin operating at peak performance. And peak performance, means that you maximize your manhood. Your peak performance is you're doing the very best. You're operating at excellence. But the problem is when we're stuck in these traumatic situations, these trauma points in our life, we're not able to proceed further. We're just stuck, stuck there. And we want to move, but we don't have the capacity. So um, I'm going to um, uh, ask Dr. Alana to give us that uh, the information about the trauma cure so that we'll be able to um, to purchase tickets. She may even give us a, a special na uh, national men's prayer call uh, discount if we mention the fact, uh, mention the six parts of the brain. I don't know what <laughs> I'll talk with her about that. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, and as uh, uh, Audrey said, could you put the um, put that information, thetraumacure.com? Yep, that's it, yeah. thetraumacure.com. Um, the Trauma Cure stands for Creators Using Radical Empathy. Mm. And I'm a skills over pills doc. So I don't give any prescriptions anymore. And I have nothing against medication. Medication is useful. Heck, I take it myself. Don't know. I'm not saying nothing about meds. But I am saying that we need to have the skill set and the tool set of understanding these parts of our brain and knowing how to recognize the impact of these uh, seven components of the brain and how this reflects on everything that we do. So we'll learn more about what type of events cause psychological trauma. And I'll introduce more from my methodology of empathy skills practice for traumatized humans, where I teach anybody. And I'm not, this is not just for the doctors and the professionals. I teach this in language that is easy to understand. And that's really for anybody who is at the point where they want to work through traumas without having to dive into all of the nitty gritty details of all those traumas, <clears throat> excuse me, um, because while it's important to recognize that we've had traumas, it really is very difficult and many people avoid getting into their past traumas because they're like, hey, who wants to bring all that up? Um, but it's important to recognize how those traumas are still impacting your programming today 
And then how do you uh, have tools and skills that you can uh, that you can use to correct your own self and break out of those trauma cycles. So that's what we'll be doing. It's June 22nd through 24th. It's a three day event. It's all day. So your discount is that you're going to get 20 years worth of yes. information and uh, 20 years worth of important uh, things that can move you forward in one day for $97. Um, which is the regular admission ticket or 197, the VIP ticket, which also includes special sessions with me, as well as the recordings of the event and the information. So it's already discounted. So it ain't going no, no, down yes. no more. Now, okay? that that, <laughs> now that I see that, I'm, I'm good to go. Hey, uh, Dr. Alana, I'm going to um, allow about five minutes for anybody uh, that, that has a, a quick question to ask you. Um, uh, because we definitely we're, we're we're beyond our time, but I'm just I'm I'm just compelled to make sure that um that while we have you available that we can we can be blessed by you. So, are there any questions from the audience or responses? You know the old uh, they said going once. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we thank you. We thank you. This was a special um, edition, and we normally are just here on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But to come on Wednesday, um, and not to set a precedent, but to uh, but this whole month has been a precedent by bringing the female perspective, so that we as men can grow and learn uh, what we need to do in order to continue to grow, continue to renew our minds, continue to pursue that peak performance. Hey, this is the National Men's Prayer Call. We are just honored and, and, and privileged, and it's our pleasure to be able to bring you information for your transformation. We'll see you tomorrow when Dr. George Frazier, hey, if you don't know who Dr. George Frazier is, you've been living under a rock or in a cave somewhere. Come out from underneath the rock, get out of the cave, because I promise you, this brother, this young man is a national treasure. Dr. George Frazier is a multiple best-selling author. He is the founder of our PNC, the Power Networking Conference, which Forbes Magazine says is one of the five top conferences to attend in the United States regardless. So this is a, a gentleman that I have utmost respect for, and we were privileged and blessed to have him uh, agree to come on. Um, his sister, Dr. Emma, is led us off on um, uh, the beginning of this month of, of, the, of the female's um, uh, perspective. So uh, when I, I kind of reached out to her and kind of nudged her to help me, but we got Dr. George. He's going to speak tomorrow. So please, please let everybody you know, know, and we'll see you then. Have an awesome day and bless somebody along the way.